Okay, so in continuation with the previous lecture, uh, course number Sheshama, use of non-traditional fields, byproducts of agriculture industry, food processing unit, and forest life. Last class, I have discussed about the uh, general principles and uh, different uh, uh, kind of the byproducts and their availability in our country. And in continuation of uh, this previous lecture, today I will discuss about the uh, non-conventional feed resources. What are those feed resources? Actually, non-conventional feed resources are those feeds that have not been traditionally used. That means these are not conventional form of the feed resources and traditionally not under the practice for feeding of the animal. So those feed which have not been traditionally used for animal feeding, either by farmers or any of the feed manufacture in commercial feed. So that is why we can say that those feed resources which are not traditionally used by the farmers for feeding of their livestock and even by the commercial uh, plants or commercial feed manufacturers, they also not using such kind of the feed that is why we can say this is coming under the unconventional field resources. This includes agriculture and industrial byproduct and uh, in some uh, certain percentage we can uh, feed the animals or we can offer those feeds agricultural and industrial byproduct up to certain limit to the livestock or uh, getting more uh, nutrition or we can compensate the deficiency or the scarcity of the feed resources. So we can use that, but it depends on the palatability, nutritional value, non uh, anti nutritional factor, some toxic factors are also related with this kind of the feed. So Anti-nutritional factors concentration may be high in non-conventional feed resources. So the percentage of inclusion level it depends on the palatability, nutritional value, and toxic potential of that particular feed resources. So what is the need of our non-conventional feeds? in livestock feeding practices. And uh, India has around 2.4% world geographical area, as you know about that. And uh, the, uh, India has 16% of the world human population. And uh, it, in, India inhabits 15% of the world livestock, almost. Maybe some uh, recent data may be higher. But uh, uh, around 15% of the world livestock population and poultry population reside in India. So that is why the, there is increase in demand of the feed and fodder. Definitely for feeding uh, those high population of the livestock and poultry. And this leads to development of new strategy or new nutritional strategy, the strategy of feeding needs to prepare to feed our animals throughout the, uh, around the year without any scarcity. So by that way, only we can fulfill after utilization or uh, inclusion of some unconventional sources or exploitation of some unconventional sources for feeding to our animals. And uh, our country, that uh, India at present, 
facing net deficit of around 35 or 36 percent of green corner deficiency around 11 percent deficiency of dry fodder and around 44 percent deficiency of the concentrate this data is actually in grassland and forest research institute 2010 and uh, uh, this is the scenario of deficiency of the different kind of feed and corn so highest deficiency of concentrate feed because concentrate ingredient is also used for the feeding to human population as well. So after leftover uh, concentrate, we can offer to other animals. So maximum efficiency of concentrate feed. And like that, uh, around 11% uh, dry fodder deficiency is also in India. Because the uh, livestock population is too high and uh, production of this uh, dry powder and uh, production as well as the processing is uh, not up to the mark up to the uh, not fulfilling the total uh, feeding uh, whatever required for the livestock so if we talk about the green powder it is around 36 percent in scarcity so we must uh, think about how we can uh, reduce the uh, deficiency or reduce the shortage of the feed uh, by inclusion of uh, such unconventional feed resources. So this is one of the way to reduce the, or we can compensate the scarcity of the conventional feed resources by using application of certain limit of unconventional feed resources in livestock feeding. Here you can see that uh, what is the fodder demand and supply scenario in our country. This data is in million tons. So if we look here in 2010, around deficiency of uh, deficit of 10, uh, around 11% dry fodder and 36% green part like that in, in uh, it is projected data and uh, in 2020 some uh, higher side uh, deficiency in uh, deficit in case of uh, dry powder around 12 percent and uh, green powder uh, deficit reduced it is around 30 percent like that if this is you can see if you can see 2050 the green fodder deficit is reducing day by day, year by year, and it is around 18% in 2050. This is the projected data, and the dry fodder deficiency, deficiency is 13%. So, by application of different technology in forage production system and fodder production system, scientists uh, developed. Uh, so many varieties uh, of uh, high cultivation and high productive, high yield uh, fodder crop. So we can uh, reduce day by day the deficit of the green fodder. This is good scenario. And uh, by that way, we can fulfill the demand of the, uh, our livestock feeding. And here you can see that uh, what is the requirement, availability requirement and deficit of uh, food protein and uh, total digestible nutrient in million tons. In uh, 2010, here we can see that uh, what is the requirement. It is, the requirement is 60 million tons of CP and TDN is 347.8 million. Like that, availability was two less uh, around 42 uh, 43 million ton and 273 and 271 million ton availability and deficit is around uh, protein deficiency is around 28.5 percent and TDN deficiency is around 22 percent so this is the data of 2010 and 
this is the projected value and you can see that in 2040 this is the requirement and uh, 406 million ton of tdm requirement and here you can see the deficit value deficit percentage is reducing year by year so this is a uh, good uh, for uh, livestock production and productivity and uh, we can maintain uh, our livestock with minimum deficiency problem. But, so now here you can see that what is the role of uh, non-conventional feed resources during a scarcity period. And actually the non-conventional feed resources which is uh, like agro-industrial byproduct, as well as uh, drought resistant uh, vegetation. And with a combination of urea and molasses, these non-conventional feed resources can be used for meeting the nutritional requirement of uh, livestock during a scarcity. So when I include urea and molasses, so that means we can including the in, enhancing the nitrogen percentage and uh, carbohydrate and uh, sugar percentage in the uh, this uh, vegetation on this forage crop industrial byproduct. So after application of urea and molasses, subtle limit, we can enhance the nutritional quality of these poor quality roughages. And while we enhance the nutrient requirement in respect of the tyrion and uh, protein, we can feed that uh, poorer quality of edges during the scarcity to meet the requirement of livestock, to maintain the requirement of nutrients in particular livestock. And about uh, 60 to 80 percent requirement of dry matter. Generally, in general, about 80 percent, 70 to 80 percent requirement we can fulfill by the dry matter, uh, this uh, roughage part. So, in general, uh, 70 to 30 ratio is applicable for feeding to of, uh, livestock of uh, medium builder or low producing builder. So by that uh, here we can using the roughage part is 60 to 80 percent and uh, the demand can be fulfilled by collecting the crop residue, dry grasses from forest leaves, pollen tree leaves from the forest area and we can feed that tree leaves, dry grasses and crop residue to our environment during a scarcity period. And the cost of uh, transportation and processing, which are higher, if we can carry or transport the refugees and feed ingredients from one part to the other part, and we can, if we can uh, use that trans, uh, transportation facilities for uh, carrying these parts so it uh, the costing high so to reduce the cost for of transportation we can compress the heat resources or edges and after compressing uh, or densifying it uh, we can mix the bran molasses and minerals etc so the delivery of that uh, densified feedlock or mixing with these nutrients, the nutrient availability will also increase and delivery, delivery cost is also reducing side by side. So transportation cost may be reduced by that way and animal can get better nutrient availability for their production. So uh, here you can see that the example of complete feed during the scarcity. So banyan tree leaves uh, is a about percentage of inclusion is 50%, maize grain 27%, ground nut hair 40%, bee wild rice bran is 7%, mineral mixture and salt is 2%, and some amount of traces of vitamin we can also add 
for to meet the requirement of the especially fat soluble vitamin so we can prepare a complete kit for a scarcity feeding in that way and if we talk about the calculated value of the nutrients so is ingredients inclusion of these ingredients how much nutrient we can supply to the animals so nutrient availability in these resources combined resources in the city bhailo is 17% dcp is 8% the dcp means digestible food and total digestible nutrient is 42% so by that way we can maintain our animal during a scarcity feeding by opting to complete feed during a scarcity using these feed ingredients so what is the characteristics of non conventional feed uh, actually milk crop which generates valuable non conventional feed and that are excellent source of carbohydrate for ruminants such as tapioca sugar cane and feeding these carbohydrate source which is advantageous because the availability of utilization of npn compound in presence of energy so we can use npn compound with this fodder crops and uh, we can get more to protein level and we can get more utilization of the nitro so this is the characteristic of the non conventional feed uh, resources and they can mainly organic and can be in solid form slurry form and liquid form the economic value which is less than the, the cost of the collection and transportation for using these kind of the wastage or unconventional resources of the industry i uh, but uh, this is very important that uh, important to say that the certain toxic factor and deleterious uh, factors which may have deleterious effect on the animal like uh, in the example is castor bean oil uh, castor bean neem seed wild cakes so these uh, wild cakes may have some toxic principles so there is some limitation of inclusion of this wild cakes and uh, these by products of a food production system which have not been used or recycled so this can be used in certain limit as the unconventional feed resources with uh, conventional feed resources we can mix it and we can offer to the animal in certain limit. so this is a example of concentrate mixture using unconventional feed resources uh these are the ingredients like jowar 10% mango mango seed kernel unconventional feed resources 10% ghee oil rice bran 25% ghee ghee oil salt seed meal this is also unconventional feed resources we can include 5% safflower meal 5% silk uh, a cotton seed cake cotton seed cake uh, is about 15% uh, silk cotton seed cake 15% cotton seed cake 20% molasses uh, is 7% minimum mixture 2% and salt 1% so by that way we can prepare the on some tables here conventional as well as our conventional feed resources both are present and we can mix together and feed to our animal here is the classification of non conventional feed resources what is the classification of non conventional feed resources you can see here that uh, energy source 
generally classified into three forms energy source, protein source, and miscellaneous source. So, in energy source, Bilanti Babu, you might have seen the plant of the Bilanti Babu in village area. And in farm there also farm uh, uh, also available, this Bilanti Babu. And a small ruminant, particularly, they are very much uh, adapted and they, this, the uh, leaves of the Bilanti Babu is very much palatable and uh, offered to the small ruminant, especially sheep and goat. Apple waste, copa pod, coconut peel, usum cake. These are the uh, industrial byproducts. Apple industry, copa industry, coconut manufacturing, uh, uh, coconut extraction industry, usum cake, mango seed kernels, rain tree pods, tamarind seed powder, tamarind seed wild cakes. So these are the energy source. Like that protein source, ambadi cake, corn gluten meal, corn stiff liquor, gancha seed, guar meal, isabgol, chowar cake and gluten, niger seed cake, rubber seed cake, suwabul seed, sun hemp seed. So these are the protein source. And miscellaneous source like sugar can top, bubble pod and seeds, banana root, bulk, citrus byproduct, jackfruit paste, palm, tree, product, byproduct, potato based, seaweed, nagashi, ajola, tea based, tomato based. Yeah, and several other industrial byproducts which is uh, coming under the miscellaneous source. This is the source of protein as well as the energy source of containing good source of protein and energy. So this uh, jackfruit paste. So this is the examples of the unconventional feed resources. So here you can see that how we can process the non-conventional feed resources or uh, converting into complete feed and total mix process or feeding to the animals. How we can use it. So before feeding uh, non-conventional feed resources, they must be well processed. This is the very much important things. So we have to process these feed resources before feeding to the animal. And processing method, uh, we can use chopping. So chopping, uh, grinding, pelleting, and uh, we can mix it uh, into in form, mix uh, in form blade. <laughs> to discourage the selection of or keeping the conventional feed resources from mixture. So we can uh, process it and uh, by processing we can increase the palatability of that unconventional feed resources and reduce the selection of conventional feed resources. And uh, complete, we can prepare complete ration and uh, the complete ration can only be prepared by identifying the large number of unconventional feed resources. We can first to identify large number of the unconventional feed resources, and we can assess the nutrient availability in that particular resources. And based on that nutrient availability, we can prepare a complete process with the mixture to the conventional feed resources. So by that way, we can uh, balance the nutrient in that particular rasa or particular animal only. Other method of processing we can also apply like application of moisture, pressure, temperature, or gelatinization of the starch portion of the grains, extrusion method, 
so by that way we can reduce the uh, some toxic principle from that unconventional feed uh, resources uh, we can by that way we can enhance the inclusion level of that particular and increase the palatability as well as the nutrient availability for particular large crops and uh, what is the constraint in utilization of the non conventional feed resources if we can talk about the constraint what is the limitation of its utilization <coughs> so <clears throat> limited uh, actually limited knowledge on the chemical uh, composition is available at present regarding the different kind of the non conventional food sources so this is one of the major constraint before uh, in, uh, including these non conventional food sources in the diet of the animal we should have and we must have the uh, chemical composition of particular of that particular resource feed resources so this is the lighting at present also and uh, most of the non conventional feed resources that contains anti nutritional factor this is one of the very much important limitation anti nutritional factors and uh, thus uh, the, these feed resources are not suitable for use in livestock feeding practices in general and uh, we have little knowledge of that uh, nutrition factor in uh, different uh, unconventional feed resources so we have to quantify that uh, before uh, apply in a large quantity in a livestock feeding so this is one of the major constraint for its application and non availability of uh, non conventional feed resources in large quantity and uh, production is also a scattered one and uh, not a defined different area of the production so transportation cost is increased and uh, by that way this is also one of the constant and uh, availability is restricted and uh, particular season it is a kind of the fodder is available so we should think about the storage of that particular or that non conventional feed resources so we should uh, we can store it for feeding to the animal so a storage may be one of the limitation and lacking of uh, managerial and technical skills or utilization of that particular feed in under field condition or in live animal feeding so 10% may be required for application and uh, to decide the inclusion level of that particular feed and uh, one of the big uh, constant is processing difficulty how we can process it to reduce the anti nutritional factor and to increase the availability of the nutrient this is uh, processing is uh, difficult task uh, difficulty in collection handling transportation and processing of these feed resources these are coming under the processing difficulties so this is one of the then uh, constants so these are the four, five to six major constant which uh, generally affect the utilization of non conventional feed resources in livestock feed so we should uh, uh, focus on this how we can uh, interpret or how we, we can uh, reduce the uh, this constant how uh, we can work on this constant to increase the or enhance the availability of the non conventional feed resources as a livestock feed so this is uh, some nutrition and nutritious value nutritional value and nutritive factor in some common non conventional feeds like bilanti gobol uh, and more concentration of the tannin and if it's a excess concentration of tannin then it is harmful for protein utilize cocoa powder it contains theobromine and this is a poisonous alkaloid corn meal it contains 
एंटीट्रिप्शन फैक्टर और रेसिडुअल बार बम्स आल्सो कंटेन्स सम एंटीट्रिप्शन फैक्टर्स लाइक टाइनचा सीड इट कंटेन्स ट्रिप्सिन इनहिबिटर एंड मोर कंसेंट्रेशन ऑफ द टाइनिन sugar cane tops also contains a large quantity of the oxalates so we should think about like how we can reduce the oxalate concentration in sugar cane top palm tree also contains a good amount of the tannin so we can limit the palm tree by product because tannin may reduce the availability of the protein if it is excessive amount some seed ke cyanogenic glycoside which is very much toxic in case of the ruminant So we should think about that. And tomato waste it contains uh, generally less amount of the deleterious uh, factors, but uh, so we can use it in uh, more quantity. But uh, there will be the chance of microbial infection. And jowar uh, cake and gluten may contains high level of the tannin. Sugar cane seed contains uh, myrmosin. This is the literious one, and it can uh, myrmosin uh, toxicity may reduce the iron uptake, and uh, otherwise it can may be hyperactive. And goiter may be there may be the chance of the goiter. So we can reduce uh, this. Uh, we can think about that how we can reduce by application of the different processing methods. But these uh, uh, resources having a good quantity of the protein C D and P D, right? so this is uh, what is uh, to the class and uh, thank you very much